Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, we're gonna get started with paginated reports. We're gonna create a data source, a couple of data sets, and some parameters. Stay tuned. Okay, paginated reports. Man, they, people are talking about these everywhere, right? They've been out in SSRS and Power BI report server for a bit, but now they're available in the Power BI service. And people are asking me so many questions about them. Like, how do I get started? And so that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. So you guys know how I like to do. Instead of all this talking, let's what? Let's head over to my laptop. Okay, the first thing you need to do is either download Report Builder, which you can see here. So this, at the end, at the end of all these videos that we create, um, that we, that, that'll be published out about paginated reports, you'll have a report that looks just like that, okay? And Adam's gonna post some collateral down in the comments below, like the sample RDLs and some store procedures. I'm just using AdventureWorks um, as my data source. So if you get have AdventureWorks running in your environment, you create these store procedures, you can follow along in the videos. All right. Okay. Enough talking. Back to my, back to my desktop. All right. So you need um, either to download Report Builder, and that's what I have here. And this is the end product of what we'll, what we'll get to or you can use Visual Studio. So either one will work. You develop the report in either environment. The only thing you really need if you wanna upload this to the service is the final RDL, all right? So once you have that done, open up Report Builder, and you can see I have a starting point here that I created. It's a really simple uh, report that I've created. And in this report, I only have a header and a footer. I've imported some images and done some text. Uh, some, I've created a few text boxes. And when, as we go on in the videos, I'll show you how to do this stuff, all right? But in this video, we're gonna focus on creating our data source, creating our data sets, and adding a few parameters, okay? All right, so the first thing you wanna do, once you have Report Builder open, is right click on your data source and say, add data source. We'll give it a name. We're gonna call this Azure SQL. And then for paginated reports running in the service, you can only use embedded data sources. Now, will that improve and get better over time? Sure it will, right? This is in public preview, so be patient, okay? Be patient. The next thing you wanna do, um, you, click use, you click the radio button labeled, use a connection embedded in my report. And beca because we're using Azure SQL, I'm gonna go ahead and change my connection type to Microsoft Azure SQL Database. If you wanna know all the data sources that are available today that's supported by paginated reports in the service, go read the blog post that we put out, I forget, not too long ago, all right? And if you're going on-premises, all these data sources are available to you, all right? So then once you do that, you click Bill, enter your data, database name, your server name, and right now I'm gonna use just some basic SQL authentication. Choose your database. If your credentials are incorrect, like mine are right there, you probably won't get the list that you want, but let's try it again and one more time. There we go. So you put your use, you gotta put your username and password in to make sure you get the proper list of databases, okay? Click test connection, right? My connection has succeeded and click okay and click OK once more, and now you'll see your data source is created. Pretty easy, pretty simple um, to get this up. The next thing you wanna do before you start building reports, you gotta get the data sets, all right? A little different from Power BI Desktop. Um, and so using Report Builder or data tools, you can do, lot. there's lots of different ways to get your data sets. You can use queries that are embedded in the report. You can use store procedures. I'm gonna use store procedures for my Azure SQL database. If you guys are going on premises, you may wanna test this out. Remember, this is in public preview. Things change, it gets better. Um, and so you may encounter some challenges doing different things, but be sure to test everything out. If you got questions, comments, you run into any challenges, post them in the comments below, all right? so. Um, back to my desktop, back to my desktop. Right click on your data source that's new, newly created. Mine is called Azure SQL, whatever you call yours. You, you know, right click on it. So I'm gonna right click and select add data set. I'm gonna call this data set uh, DS country. And what I'm gonna do is you have a choice where you can just type some T-SQL right in because I'm connected to a SQL Server database, it would be T-SQL. Um, but if you if you have store procedures out there, just go ahead and check the box, check the radio button label store procedure. It may prompt you to sign in, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in one more time. I'm pretty confident I can get this correct. And now click the drop down, and you'll see all of the different 
uh, data sources, uh, store procedures that's available. I'm gonna go ahead and store procedures and table value functions. I'm gonna go ahead and choose my country sales and quota. So DS, let's rename this country sales, right? And click okay. Once I click okay, right, you'll see the data set added to my um, folder for data sets. But what you should also notice is that up in the parameter sections, which was previously empty, it automatically added those parameters. So if your store procedure has any, expects any input parameters, it'll automatically add those parameters to your report for you, okay? You don't have to create them or do anything. It's like magic. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is like magic, you add your other data sources. And so I'm adding two, I mean, so I'm, my apologies, data sets. And so for my parameters that that store procedure expects, instead of end users free texting um, those values out, I'm gonna pre-populate those. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a little bit, all right? So just, I'm gonna add two more data sets. We'll do that quickly, right? Whew, that was a lot of work. Now that both of those data sets are populated, now all I wanna do, uh, I'm sorry, are added. Now what I wanna do is I wanna assign those data sets, those two data sets I added, I want my parameters to get pre-populated with the values from those data sets. If we don't pre-populate the parameters with values from some type of source or enter, enter our own hard-coded values, let me show you what'll happen when you run the report. So if I run this report now, all right, so I get these text boxes. They're just free form text boxes and my end users will need to go, uh, I think it's 2013, I think the country is United States. We don't want them to guess, right? We wanna provide value to them. And so if I go back into design mode, all I need to do is double click on one. So the first thing I wanna do is change the prompt. And so what I'm just gonna put year colon, right? And then the next thing you go to available values and you can say specify values or get values from a query. If I do specify, val specify values, just me free typing those values in. And so if new values are added to that list, I'll have to go and modify this over and over and over again. That's why you like to use an external data source like a query. And so I, for this particular one, this is year. So I'm gonna say get value and I'm gonna choose DS year. And your value field and your label field. The value field is typically the field that's gonna be passed um, to the query. And then the label field is what the end user is gonna see so they can um, pull back. So they, it's just a friendly value so that they would know what to select when they're running the report. In my case, it's just years, so I'm using them both as the same thing, interchangeable, okay? Click okay, and then repeat the exact same steps for country. But instead of the prompt being that, I'm gonna just call it country colon, and then go to my available values and do get values from query, choose DS country, and again, repeat this, right? And click okay, just like that. And then if I <clears throat> choose run, instead of that text box, now it's populated with values <clears throat> from those queries, just like that. When my end user run the, run the report, all they need to do is select the value from those drop down instead of typing thing, things, typing the values in. And so the final thing I wanna show you is that you can add your own parameters. And so what I can do is, so my store procedure doesn't have a parameter. I mean, it only has two parameters, but I wanna add an additional, additional parameter that's outside the scope of that store procedure. So if I just right click on parameters, say add a new parameter, and so we're gonna use this one later in the video, expanded salesperson. And then I'm just gonna call this one expanded. The same thing. And go ahead and choose available values, right? I'm not gonna specify any. Before I leave here, I wanna change the data type to Boolean. So true or false, if I want it, yes or no. And then in my default values, I want this to always default to false. All right, and click okay. Oh, one thing I did, no space in the name. There we go, and click okay. And now if I run the report, you'll see, right, I have true or false, kind, kind of funky on the resolution of my machine, but it's true or false. Once you publish it out, it, it shows much better there. So now I've added a data source, I've added three data sets and a couple of parameters. So now I'm, start, I'm ready to start adding like bar charts and matrices and things on this report. But guess what? You gotta wait to the next video. So if you guys have any questions, comments, post them in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the Guide to Cube channel, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give it a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.